Hello everyone, what's up? Well, we got something on my board. What does it say? Ooh, Tarantula Mythbuster video 32. You haven't seen any Mythbusters videos from me in a while. So today, as I promised, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we're going to touch the Ophopus uh, species. Okay, so, as I said earlier in the video, the topic of this Mythbuster video is going to focus more on the Ophopus genus members. Um, which are commonly called the skeletons, which I'm going to explain to you in a bit. So a little background history of the Ophobus uh, genus. Uh, these are in the family Avicularianae, which ironically the pink toes, the Avicularias, are not in the same family, even though that the Udomin and the Sarnathus look very identical to the Avicularia as spider limbs, but with the exception of the green abdomen, of course. Um, so, Fulpus species are native to uh, South America, mainly around the French Guiana area to Brazil. So, this makes them New World species. However, the species are very unique as that they have urticating hairs on their pedipops, not on their abdomen like most New World species like Lassiodora, Nandu, Brachypelma, Gramasola, and such. Okay, so. Without further ado, we'll get started. So, the skeleton describes the Ephopus morenus. So, it's either called the skeleton tarantula or the French Guiana skeleton. The Isionathus is commonly called the blue fang, which is one of the rarest members of the group. The EU will describe the Udomin, which is commonly called the Emerald Skeleton. And the ER is the Burgundy Skeleton. So here are the Latin names. So Ephopus is spelled Ephipopus, that's how you pronounce it. Morenus, Cyanomathus, Rufescens, and Udomin. Udomin describes the emerald skeleton. So let's go have a look at my specimens and then we'll describe more about the details. Okay, so I'm going to show you my three specimens that I have. I don't have a Cyanathus, so I'll never get one anymore uh, because they're absolutely difficult to keep and they're pretty much like your Avicularia genus. Uh, they die of literally no good reason, commonly called sudden avic death syndrome. Um, However, in my experience, the Udomin, the Rufescens, and the Emeranus are super easy to keep. So I'll show you my female Emeranus. Oh, she's out. Woohoo, let's get a good opportunity video of this one. So as you've seen, that's what she looks like. She's approximately a four inch female. Um, the species is probably the largest member of the group. Uh, wild caught females can attain at least a six inch leg span. So I'll give you an idea of what her temperament is. Whoop. So you can note how really hairy the pedipops are. That's where their urticating hairs are. And you can see the species, let me draw her out so you can see what she looks like. There we go. Come on, sweetie. The species is known for having very thick fore legs and super thin hind legs. So this is the largest member of the species. So the E. Moranus, females, can generally live around a 12 to 15 year lifespan and I'll show you what they look like now. So, as spiderlings kind of look like your avicularias. They come from French Guiana and Brazil. A mature female will look exactly like the one you see right here. And a mature male it's going to look really different. <laughs> kind of looks like a fuzzball. 
you can see why they call it the skeleton tarantula because of their stripes on their knees. So the markings look very similar to the AC Mani, but with exception to the E. Morenus having a lot more yellow to them. Okay, so that's your E. Morenus. Okay, now let's look at my smaller one. Uh, Bulbus rufescens, which is the emerald, no, not the emerald skeleton, the burgundy skeleton. That's the Udaman, that's the one I'll show you next. Okay, so this is Rene, my sling, uh, which actually might be a male. So you can see that's what she looks like. I believe you saw her in many of the feeding videos, so you got a good idea what she looks like. So let's go have a look and see what they look like as slings, as mature males and mature females. So let's go back. So a roof essence, mature male, no, spiderling first, is going to look exactly like Renee, as you can see closely. They have sort of like a burgundy tinge, especially on the hind legs and kind of darkish on the forelegs. But as females, they're gonna look very, very different. As you can see, that's why they call it the burgundy skeleton because of the burgundy color on the abdomen. And as mature males, you can see the sexual dimorphism in there. Yeah, well, not entirely, but you can see that he's a lot more leggier than her. All right, now we'll go on to the Sionathus. Spiderlings, as you saw in my marina. These are characteristic for having blue chlorocyri. As females, you can see the blue fangs right over here. And mature males, yeah, not so pretty. They kind of look like your erufescents. Now for the last member, the Udaman. Spiderling. I call this one the poor man's blue fang <laughs> because if you look closely, they kind of resemble a blue fang minus the blue fangs on the chlorocyri. Female. It's going to look exactly like you see over here. I'm trying to give a close up of the specimen. Yeah, so they look like, and as well as a mature male. Yeah, not so pretty. So this one actually shows more of the sexual dimorphism also found on the E. Moranus. You can see the males and the ma females look exactly. And so one can see that the Fulpus males and females look really different from one another. And that's termed sexual dimorphism. All right, so let's have a look at my Udaman and see what she looks like. Uh, this was Esmeralda. I got this one around three years ago. I got this one as a freebie um, from Tarantula Canada from buying uh, that mature male. Well, the Pima Talca that ended up being a mature male. So let's have a look at this one. Hmm. Well, I can tell that she's going to be very, very nervous. She's pretty fast. T, I'm not going to film her for too long. Nor am I going to touch her. <laughs> so basically, that's what she looks like. Oh, here's my specimen. She looks to be around three inches. You can see why they call it the emerald skeleton, because of the metallic yellow abdomen. Uh, colors are like like a burnt orange off brown, like a mixture of the two. Well, yeah, I guess beautiful specimen. 
So the lifespan that I mentioned uh, on the E. Muranus is pretty similar to what you're going to find on the Udamin, the Cyanathus, and the Rufescence. The females will generally live around 12 to 15 years, and the males will probably live between uh, 3 to 5 years. Um, they're not actually fast growing teas, uh, they're more in between medium, medium fast growers. Um, the Udaman that you saw, I raised as a half an inch in early 2008, and she's exactly three inches. Oh, forgot to mention the sizes too. Uh, the Udaman will get around having to four, four and a half inches, uh, same as the Rufescens and the Sinonathus. So they're not technically very large tarantulas, but ideally they're pretty fun to keep. The E. Moranus, as I mentioned, is the biggest one and the biggest member, uh, so they can attain at least a five to maybe six inch leg span. I remember having uh, Bridget the first, which was a pretty big E. Moranus. Now you're probably asking yourself, how much do these things cost? Well, they're pretty affordable, except for the Sionathus, of course. Let me just close my fan. So. These are the price ranges that you can typically find on online dealers, albeit they'll vary considerably. Uh, these are prices that I have found in Canada, especially from Tarantula Canada's website. So the e Moranas typically go for around $35 if it's a half an inch to about $100 if it's a good sized female. I remember paying mine, uh, the one you saw, for $75 as a 3 inch female and she molted, I think, a good two times in my care. The East Aranathus is the most expensive member. Uh, slings can go for at least between 45 to 55 bucks and I probably would expect to pay around $200 for an adult female. Now the Rufescens and the Udaman are one of the more uncommon members and they're not exactly high in demand. Um, so they're kind of placed a little lower. These are probably expected prices that I will pay for both these members if they're adult females. Okay, so here are the tarantula dealers that I recommend. A lot of people have asked me this and I keep repeating the same dealers. So in Canada we have Avery'sExotics.com who's based in British Columbia. I haven't bought it from uh, Dave yet because uh, the shipping from BC to Quebec is around $45 versus if I go to Tarantula Canada .ca, I can go just 20 minute drive to their house and get it for free. I mean free shipping that is. And then you have the Arachnoboards forum. There's a Canadian forum. All you have to do is go to your profile. Uh, there should be a list called join groups and you can just click on the Canadian forum site and a moderator will actually uh, let you join if you're Canadian. Now for the US um, we have SwissInverts.com, CanTheBugEye.com, and of course the For Sale Trade Arachnoboard section. Uh, I can't really personally vouch for these two dealers offhand because I've never dealt with them. Um, ever since 9-11 happened, um, the customs is really like finicky of what you can actually bring across the border, and unfortunately Tarantulas is not one of them. So to get a legal shipment of Tarantulas if I buy from the states from these two dealers I would have to spend at least a thousand dollars and own a fish and wildlife permit to actually deal with international traits so this is why I won't be able to buy teas for the US nor will I be able to sell to the US and then the spider shop and then Virginia Cheeseman are some of the recommended uh, dealers if you're living in the United Kingdom now I'm going to talk about cage design, topic number five. So, I'm not going to lie to you, it's pretty easy to house a Ephobus genus. So, the cheapest w enclosure that's by far the most recommended one is a six liter shoebox enclosure that you can buy them for Walmart, around five to seven dollars. So all you have to do is just make air holes on the side. And there we go, that's your perfect enclosure for a four and a half to five inch tea. This will house well an Udaman, a Rufescens, a Saronathus, as well as an Emoranus. So basically, uh, substrate recommended, you can use uh, the Eco Earth or a mixture of potting soil and vermiculite. 
Um, you have to provide a lot of substrate again uh, because these are obligate burrowers, so they like to make burrows, like you see with my E. Moranis did. So out of water dish is also very necessary. Um, it's kind of dry in there. I have to mist it, and you have to add like a little hiding place. So it's just a cork bark, and then just dug a little bit so I can pre-dug a little burrow for her, and then she decided, okay, let me continue on that, and then she did it. Okay, so that's what a my Emeranus tank looks like. My E Udeman tank, it's pretty simple. It's just a um, oversized yellow container. Again, with the water dish and a little hide that she used to burrow, but she somehow got out. Again, drill some air holes. And she's loving it. And then for slings, very typical of the, you know, like your old world species, like your Haplopalma, the OBT, and the sort. Just an ordinary pill jar with a lot of substrate in there to burrow. You can see my Rufescence has made an intricate burrow. A lot of tunnels that she made. So the care, in terms of care sheet, the humidity uh, should be around 75 to 80%. And temperature conditions should be at least between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's typical, optimal. Uh, temperatures that you find in any teas that you can keep. Alright, so a little tip on the East Aranathus, the Blue Fang. Uh, in my experience, this is one of the more difficult ones to take care of. Um, I have bought three from Tarantula Canada and they all end up dying due to unnatural causes or unknown causes, apparently. Um, so if you're buying a half inch spiraling and if you're going to use a pill jar to house it, what I would recommend you doing is making cross ventilation uh, so that way you make not only air holes on the cover but you would make air holes on the circumference of the pill jar so this adds a lot of ventilation to it and it's very very important to get a good ventilation system in there also you're going to have to keep the humidity really well so here as you can see here my Eurofessence has plenty of humidity I just missed around once or twice a week just to make sure that the substrate is dry and whenever I see it dry out I just add some a little more. I don't overly miss because that could be a really problem. It could introduce uh, some fungal and bacterial growth in your tank and basically you're going to have to rehouse a tarantula and probably that's something you can avoid doing. Uh, also make sure that your, f your sling is well fed and you have to feed them well. Um, I think the majority of why my AVIX slings were dying because of the high metabolism rate, they have to be fed a lot more often than most teas. And I probably now have realized that could be the reason why my, my AVIX slings died of unnatural causes. But make sure I would feed those maybe around once or twice a week. Maybe twice a week would be more sufficient until they get like a sizable size then you can just limit yourself to once every two weeks like I do for my feeding videos with my E. Marinus and my E. Udeman. So I hope those tips help you uh, keep your E. Sironath as well. Oh dear, I did forget to mention the temperaments of these species and it's kind of important too. Okay, so these are species that are definitely not recommended for handling whatsoever. Um, these are certainly not recommended for a first-time hobbyist, for someone who's just getting into teas. These are certainly not tarantulas that I recommend you getting. Um, they're more for the intermediate slash experienced owners. All right, what's she doing? Yeah, so basically the temperaments are described as being very defensive, very quick to defend themselves, like you saw my E. Moranus did when I tried to touch her with a paintbrush and they are very very fast creatures so you probably seen my Udeman in one of my earlier videos you can see how fast she was basically they're very fast and they can move like grease lightning um, what have I seen from the specimen from experience and this is very typical of the Ephopus species is that when they do the threat postures they will usually have their fangs bared out in the open with venom dripping on their fangs. That's very, very scary. And 
And if you ever see that, then you know definitely that handling is not a good idea for these species. All right, now for breeding. So according to Wikipets, because I just wanted to see if there was any information of in terms of breeding, since I have no experience on breeding a Fulpus uh, genus before, uh, they've been described as moderately difficult. Um, you do, you might have some aggression between the female, uh, but chances of cannibalism is very low. Uh, if you do get a sack, you'll expect to have at least 80 to 110 eggs. So that's a pretty fair amount of spiderlings. Not as big as Alpara hibana, but still pretty good nonetheless. And to end off the video, as far as recommendations are concerned, um, yeah, they're pretty good teas to get. At least get the Emiranus because uh, these are the more popular members. Uh, the Ui Saunathus is also a very beautiful specimen, although albeit a little bit expensive and a little hard to take care of, but if you're up for a challenge, go for it. Uh, the Udaman, they're okay, you know, like if you like um, adult color teas. Eurofessence is actually a really nice tea to look at, you know, like a burgundy color. Why not? You know, it looks pretty good. So like I said, these are not recommended for beginners. Um, if you're starting to get into a hobby and this is your first tarantula, I would do not suggest getting these. I will probably wait to get your like your fourth or fifth tarantula, then I'll probably consider you getting your Emerus and practice your dealing of slightly defensive tarantulas and especially fast ones too. So I hope this Mythbuster video helps. So uh, sorry if, for a long wait. <laughs> And hope you enjoy it. And next one we're going to cover is the Lamprapelma and Stereopacus genus. Alright, thanks everyone.